in 10th grade, it's your last video for the yearling. So we're going to go through the last few chapters that have, um, the, I remember the first time I read this book, I was not prepared for the very end. I kind of thought it would be winding down and it still had one last scene um, that always surprised me. The first, Well, it did the first time I read it. So 29, Penny has rheumatism, think really bad arthritis. And it's February. Um, if you know anyone that has arthritis, you know the winter months can be difficult. So he cannot work. So that means Jody has to take care of things. So you see in here, the problem is Jody knows how to do a few things, but as far as planting and all that kind of stuff, Penny hasn't really taught him exactly how to do it. He's just like from the beginning, he's, I mean, Penny knows what it is to work hard when he's really young. And he wants his son to be a boy and have fun. Um, but at this point, because of that fact, um, it makes it to where they can't get the work they need done on Baxter's Island finished. So as um, his father is getting better, for the most part, Jody does a few chores and then he goes hunting and things like that. And... He goes to the Glen and gets water and all that. And one day he kind of realizes that this deer flag is no longer a fawn anymore. He's a yearling, hence the name, okay? And the title applies to flag, but it also applies to Jody in a way too. So he's not a baby. Flag's not a baby anymore. And he's starting to mature. And... Um, Jody kind of talks to his father about that, and um, as he gets older, he gets in more trouble from eating the, uh, knocking over the peas and eating them, and, and all that kind of stuff. And you can tell through this chapter, Ma, she can't stand him. Okay, um, to the point where she shoes him out. He doesn't listen to anything, and of course, Jody tries to take the blame and tries to fix everything. But as you know, when you keep reading, there are certain things eventually that he's not going to be able to fix. So he picks up the peas and he washes them and um, he kind of feels like he's done his duty by flag and done what's right. And as far as bringing flag into sleep when he was a baby, he used to sleep all night and all of that. And that's no longer happening now that he, it's getting older and he wakes up Ma in the middle of the night. So he is banned from the house. And um, you'll notice from the beginning, Penny's stood by Jody as far as the fawn is concerned. And in 29, you start to see that change now that the deer is a yearling and it's maturing, it's going to be a buck. You see Penny starting to side with Ma. So he sides with Ma on this. He can no longer come inside. And Penny, although he still doesn't necessarily feel very well, um, he's uh, starting to go out into the clearing, leaning on the stick, etc. And, um, remember he has all those extra crops, especially the tobacco ones that he's planted because he, of course he's got his tobacco that he uses and then he planted extra so he can make some money. So when he goes out there, he notices that flag has gone through here and trampled them and when you're trying to get seed to take in the flags, or not flags, the plates are so small. I mean, any kind of damage completely destroys them. So he, uh, flag tramples and destroys part of the tobacco crop. So they don't have the extra to make extra money that, of course, you can tell that they need. And so for Penny, he, you can see in this little um, scene at the end, um, he's trying to be so nice about it because he know, knows how attached his son is to flag and he's just like, put stakes up, don't tell your mother, um, you know, and even Jody can tell like this is a big deal. So chapter 30, it's March, it's beautiful, Penny's feeling better, and it's time to plant. And so this is the first time that Penny's really letting Jody do the work and learn how to do it. Okay, so they plant all kinds of things uh, corn, cotton, um, they're moving the tobacco plants over, um, all kinds of things that they have to have to live. So 
um, they work hard, I mean, for several days in a row, getting all these crops and the seeds in the ground. And as they're out there, of course, Flag goes into the forest and he comes back and he's traipsing along. And um, it says, Penny was studying the young deer with an unfathomable expression. His eyes were narrowed and speculative. And so for you, you're, I mean, even Jody kind of sees this and it says a chill ran through his body and it was a kind of odd look that his father's giving Flag. And he tries to uh, ignore it, if you will. And from the beginning, it's established that as far as Penny is concerned, he knows animals well, quite well. So he knows the older that this deer gets. And now, I mean, you can see it. The deer is wanting to become more wild. He wants to stay away and do the things that a buck would do. So that's why his eyes are narrowing. I mean, he's got an idea of what's coming and he's hoping that it, it, it isn't coming. But of course, as you read, you know it does. So <clears throat> as far as the rest of it, they plant and plant. They plant cotton. Remember, that's going to give them some money. And you have another conversation between Penny and Jody, And it's kind of like, uh, you, I mean, you know how Penny and Julia are close. And Penny asks, you think a heap of him, don't you, boy? And, of course, he does. And Penny just says, well, we'll wait and see. So, again, Penny has a, a gut feeling of what's coming. And Jody's just trying to ignore it. So, they keep planting turnips, onions, collard greens. And, um, of course, it's wearing Penny out. And then you have, at the end, the stump that he tries to get out with Caesar. And he works himself too hard and he gets himself a hernia, which is extremely painful. If you've if ever known anyone that's had it, um, your organ is not in the right place. We'll just put it that way. So he's doubled over in pain. They have to help him inside. And then Penny cannot move. He thinks he's going to be better, but he's not. And he doesn't want them to ride for the doctor because, of course, the doctor's already done so much for him. They don't have enough money. All of the above. Okay. So you have um, basically Penny has to use Jody for the work and to report on the crops and all those types of things. So um, as Penny's telling him what he needs to do and to watch over, he says, boy, you know, as good as I do, you've got to keep that yearling out of the fields. And for Jody, he says, oh, that's not a big deal. I'll get it done. And, you know, Jody's killing squirrels, doing what he needs to do to help the family. And then it happens that Flag, he goes out there to check on the corn and Flag's been eating it. So, of course, Jody, it's like that. He knows he's in trouble. He's got that feeling in his stomach. He's got to go tell his father. And so he goes and reports on everything but the corn. And, of course, the corn is the most important crop to them as far as survival. And so Jody tells him that Flag did it. So um, you have Penny, he says, looked at him pityingly. I mean, he feels sorry for him, but then he says, I'm sorry, boy, boy I more than half to look for him to do it. Like he had a feeling it was coming. So he brings, he tells Jody to go play. He brings in Ma and then Penny steps in for Jody one last time. And so he tells him he's got to go replant everything, and then he has to build the fence, okay? And he, I mean, you see Jody in this section after the deal with Penny, where he tells him to replant and build the fence. He works harder than he's ever worked in, ever, ever. Even Ma says that. Um, I mean, he works himself tirelessly to save, not the food, but to save the fawn, okay, or flag. He's not a fawn anymore. And, of course, Moss completely angry about it, but Penny, you know, he stepped in one last time. And so, <clears throat> as far as Penny, he listens to Jody as he comes in and reports about planting and building the fence. And it says, Penny listened gravely as always, but his responses were sometimes detached and vacant. And his thoughts were elsewhere. So there are little bits of foreshadowing in there that Penny, although he's interceded this, he knows it's not going to work. Okay. So 
he builds the fence. It's like six feet at its highest point. I mean, think about it relatively. If you've got a fenced-in backyard with the standard fence size, that's about eight feet. Think about six. Like, I, I y'all all know I'm short. So, like, that's, what, seven, eight inches taller than me? Let's be real. Okay, I know dogs, dogs that are much smaller than deer that can jump an eight-foot fence. So, once he gets, er, the fence up, he's planting the corn, he's doing all the work, and even Jody in this part is, I mean, he keeps watching for the corn to come up, but he's fearful because he has a feeling that flag might do it again, and in the pit of his stomach, he knows with that, I mean, he knows he can't come back from that, flag can't come back from that. So the sixth day that he works, Ma comes out there and helps him with the fence, and uh, Jody discovers that the corn is finally coming up, which is, should be good news, but for Jody, he's nervous. And so it rains, and the corn's about an inch high, and then he sees Flag, and Flag's feeding on the corn on the north end. And at this point, uh, I mean, like Jody's trying to, to get him out, and Ma's like, I'm done. This is it. This settles it. And she goes in, and she tells Penny, and then you have the end of the chapter where Penny says, I, Jody, I tried all I could. We cannot starve because of your deer. You have to go tie him up and you've got to shoot him. And chapter 32 is Jody out there with Flag. And, you know, he's talking to himself. They can't make me do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And he just cries himself sick until he's like, okay. I got to be like my father, I got to be like Penny, and I've got to figure a way out of this. So, he thinks of Oliver, he's kind of far away, so first he decides to go to Buck, which is the most helpful, we all know, as far as the foresters are concerned, and he decides, well, I'm just going to go ask him, just like he did the bear cubs, he can take him away to Jacksonville and he'll be safe there. So, he goes to the foresters. It's just Ma and Pa there. The boys are all gone trading. And, of course, at this point, he's desperate. And he asks Pa Forster what he would do. He goes, I'd shoot the deer. And, of course, Jody doesn't want to hear that. And so he begs if they could keep him kind of like, you know, Father Wink kept all those animals. And we all know what would happen. And Pa Forster says it. He'll break free and he'll go exactly. He'll go home, just like he did later on. And so at this point, he decides he's just going to go to Jacksonville himself at Flag. But the problem is, is he's hungry. Okay, He didn't eat or anything like that. He tries to look for food. And with everything that's happened, he's worn out. So he takes a nap and Flag's no longer there. And just like when they've gone on trips, hunting, etc., when Flag isn't where he's supposed to be, he eventually finds his way home. So he... um. Jody makes his way back home. He calls for Flag, and they hide out in the smokehouse and they fall asleep. And they, um, the next morning, guess where Flag is? Destroying the corn and onto the peas and all of that. And Ma discovers it. And at this point, Jody has to go in there and face his father. And his father tries to tell him, We have to, ha I mean, this is. Either we live or we starve. Like, this has to be done. And so Penny and Ma talk. And um, Jody goes inside. And his Ma tries to shoot him. But she's not a great shot. And that's why they had asked Jody to do it in the first place. And so at this point, Flag is just wounded. And you have... Jody yell out, I hate you, I hope you die, I hope I never see you again, and he runs off after Flag, and you know, Penny can't run after him, and so he has to go put Flag out of his misery, and then Jody is just completely sick because of what he's just done, his best friend Flag. So, chapter 33, we're at the end here, and Jody's not going home, he's running away, he's done. And he's decided he's going to go to Jacksonville and then catch a boat up to Boston and be with Oliver and live at sea with him. So he goes to the springs and eventually catches a, a ride with a fisherman to get Nellie Jen Wright's old dugout. So when he gets there, um, 
he fixes the dugout the best he can and he starts paddling and remember we're in Florida so he thinks he's going to row all the way to Jacksonville from the scrub which is a honking way and um he finds a place as far as the canoe because he doesn't want to be out on I mean the boat's not very good so he tries to find a place to uh, sleep and of course you can imagine his mind is racing flag's dead and he says Paul went back on me which of course we know isn't true and he did everything he could to keep the the fawn or at this point he's a deer the buck but it's either the deer or starve and the irony is eventually Jody's gonna realize what it's like to starve um so he finds um literally it says at this point flag is gone his best friend Pa, his one source of safety he feels has betrayed him fodder wing is gone oliver's gone and he feels completely alone and he says betrayal was intolerable and he can't find every every place every source of comfort he used to have is either gone or has betrayed him in his mind so <clears throat> at this point he has nothing to eat so he eats grass and he sleeps under some moss and then the next day he just keeps going because he doesn't have i mean he, he doesn't want to go home and he has nowhere else to go so he gets out on the water and it's hard to control i mean a tiny little canoe dugout in the middle of vast water where i mean the river and the bay is so wide that for him he can't control it because the wind whips through there and, the, and there's waves and all that kind of stuff so he looks back and the shore's kind of gone and it says um as far as the springs and all of that i mean it says the mouth of the run was nowhere to be found like he has no idea where he is okay and then of course at this point he has no food and it said then this was hunger okay this he says this was another thing this was terrifying and over and over and over again his parents have said you read it in this book um, if we don't have this we'll go hungry and for him it was just something they said now at this point it's extremely real okay and he alone <laughs> I mean he's so sick to his stomach he keeps drinking the river water but I mean it makes him vomit he has nothing in there and uh, it says he eventually gets off and he uh, finds a cabin among the trees because he's kind of in the swamp at this point and all that's in there is some old flour so he mix it mixes it with um water and eats that paste and of course um, i mean it says he he finds old acorns and eats it but at this point he's so weak when he's in the boats it's hard for er, in the boat it's hard for him to even control it so as boats pass by him he tries to get their attention they don't see him and then eventually he passes out and finds himself on a mail boat okay so they give him some food and he falls asleep and he wakes up back where he's well in town Volusia where grandma Hutto used to live and at this point he knows there's nowhere else to go but back home um so as he's wandering home for him he's worried because he feels like they're not going to want him after everything that's been done and as far as as he's walking back he thinks to himself flag had destroyed the better part of a year's living almost certainly they would feel they were better off without him i mean at this point he realizes what starving is and although he loves flag he realizes why they had or they told him he had to get rid of flag he realizes what it would be like to starve and why they kept protecting him from starvation and not necessarily uh, keeping flag so he gets to the glen and if you remember this is where the book started okay so the book started he played in the glen in the water drinking the water it's april it's bubbling it's beautiful and here we are again it's april we're at the glen it's literally a full circle here 
And if you remember at the beginning, he made that flutter mill and it was so exciting and lovely. He wants to tell Oliver about it. And then here he makes the flutter mill and it no longer has its charm. It was a totally different kid. I mean, think about what he's experienced within this year. He's no longer a baby He's or a fawn. He's become a yearling. So at this point, he goes home and he's like, what? What if me leaving has, you know, killed Pa or maybe they left. And so he immediately get, goes home as quickly as possible. And there's Pity sitting up. And, of course, he's worried his father won't want him in there. And, of course, he does. And <clears throat> it talks about old starvation. And Penny says he's got a face meaner and old Sufoot, ain't he? And that's so, a lesson. And it's a hard lesson he learned. Um, and that's what Penny says. I'm sorry you had to learn it that way. But that's what we were trying to tell you with Flag. And he just didn't want to listen. And so Ma's gone to get more seed. And trade with the foresters. And um, as far as Penny, when he looks at his son, he says, you've come back different. You've taken a punishment. You ain't a yearling no longer, Jody. And he said, I'm going to talk to you as a man. And because from the beginning, we've seen Penny shelter his son. And it, it makes sense. Penny had an awful childhood. He didn't get to be a boy. And here it's kind of like, Penny goes, I can't shelter you anymore. I mean, look at what, what's happened. And he says, you've seen how things go in the, the world of men. You've known men to be low down and mean like Lim. You've seen old death at his tricks like Fodderwing. Uh, you've messed around with old starvation. He says, every man wants life to be a fine thing and easy. It's fine, powerful fine. It could be lovely, but it's never easy. He says, life knocks you down all the time. You get up and then it knocks you down again. And it said, Penny says, I've been uneasy all my life. Okay. And, and then he says, I wanted life to be easier for you. Um, and he goes, I know how flag um, eased you and made you feel like you weren't alone. And of course, at this point, um, Jody's kind of ashamed that he, that he ran off because of flag a deer. Um, at this point, it, he's no longer worried about flag. He's worried about his family and living and eating. And that's why he makes a deal with his father to stay and work with him. Okay. Um, so they shake their hands <coughs> and he takes, uh, his father to bed. And it's kind of interesting because it's kind of symbolic because now you have this, the father leaning and needing the son and the son's come back no longer a baby, but a, a man, well, a young man that's learned a lot through this year. So as you read the last little bit, it says his father would no longer take the heavy part of the burden. It did not matter. He could manage alone. And it's kind of that feeling that Jody realizes he's got to be responsible for what he does, how he lives, um, and taking care of things that have to be done so they can survive. And it says, of course, when he goes to sleep, he cries out flag in his sleep. And it says it was not his own voice that called it was a boy's voice. Um, and it said that it was gone forever. As far as that carefree, I mean, his father let him enjoy it as long as he possibly could. But there comes a point where you have to take life, if you will, and deal with the knocks that it brings you. Um, I guess face first. Um not run away from it like Jody did. And that's why he was so ashamed of running away in the first place. All right. So that's the end of our book. And then you have your test this Friday. Uh, your test has three parts. Okay. So the first part of your test is fill in the blank. Know your characters, first and last names. Know the setting, time frames, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I would say most of it deals with characters, but it also has the setting in there and things like that. And it has parts of the plot in it, but it asks those parts along with characters' names, okay? So knowing characters' names first and last and all of that's really, really big on your first section. The next section you have 
um, it, it's quotes from your book, okay? And again, it deals with characters. So your quotes will describe a character and you have to tell me which character that is. And then the third section is true or false and it deals with the plot of the story, okay? Um, so those are your three sections. So remember with the true false, if any one part of that statement is wrong, the whole thing is false, okay? But those are your three sections, okay? And um, if you have any questions about the book or anything like that, feel free to text me, email me, call me. I'll be happy to answer them.